We welcome everyone to this December 5th, 2022 meeting of the Corsicana ISD Board of Trustees. This is a regular meeting and all items that have been discussed have been duly posted. While this is a meeting in public, it's not a meeting of the public. If you wish to speak, please register in the lobby for, on the audience for guest form and follow the information on the speaker form. The board's role is to set goals, approve personnel and budgets, make policy and provide oversight. We are not here to manage or solve individual problems. Management is a responsibility of the superintendent. As a board, we believe that we must educate every child, provide every child the greatest opportunity to learn, and maintain a safe and secure environment mentally, physically, emotionally, and academically. These are our core values. We appreciate your interest in the children of CISD. All right. We're going to ask Navarro Elementary. We've got several members. So Scholar Carter, Rayleigh Buchanan, Mason Weaver, Scholar Claiborne, Asher Prickett, Brody Jackson, Lauren Yost, Malachi Grigsby, and Taylor Dvorak to come up and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Can y'all turn around and place You can turn around this way where the flags are. There you go. Thank you. And we'll follow your lead. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. Thank you all so much. We appreciate it. And then stay up here for a picture. Oh, we're going to go there. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Oh, thank you. 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 Thank Greatest singer of all time. Thank you. All right. We'd ask that Raj Gripalani from Northside Baptist please do our invocation. Dear God, our help, our refuge, our protector and shield, thank you for this meeting. 
thank you for this board, their sacrifice, their time, their service to the community. We pray, please bless this meeting. Please guide it, direct it, give it your vision. Thank you. In your son's name, amen. Amen. Thank you, sir. Now we're moving into the first report, public hearing. Has anybody signed up to speak? Has anybody signed up to speak, Meryl? Okay, thank you. So, do I start this right here? You adjourn that one, and then you go into audience for guests. Well, it doesn't need to be Overview of school first. Thank you all for letting me uh, speak with you tonight. Um, happy to report that Corsican ISD has once again received an A in this year's uh, first report evaluation. Um, the score is used 2020-2021 uh, data and has uh, 20 testing areas they look at every year. Some of those areas are worth 10, some are worth 5, and some are just pass-fail with uh, no points. Um, we have remained the same scores last year with a 92 out of 100, and um, out of 18 out of the 20 areas, we have received a perfect score. Uh, the other two areas, we received 12 out of 20, and um, looking closer into those two areas, um, I think it's very confident to say that we will improve both of those next year, and will most likely receive a 2 to 4 point increase in capacity 96 out of 100 score. Um, that's all I have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else? Is there anything else? That's it. You just adjourn mm -hmm. that. Okay. And we're gonna for we're gonna adjourn that. And thank you, Brian, thank for you. doing that. We're gonna adjourn the first report hearing. And we're going to move into audience for guests. Is there any audience for guests with this? No? All right. So we're going to move into the superintendent's report. Okay. Um, we had on Saturday a first um, a Corsicana Christmas, which is a celebration of the Christmas season, as well as um, the 175th birthday for the city of Corsicana. Our um, choruses from our campuses performed and they were wonderful. They were at the palace. So I want to thank Ms. Blackard and the palace um, staff. I know Mr. Walthall was there as well um, for assisting with that. We also want to commend um, Dr. Howard. It was one of her, as a new employee of the district, was one of her first public um, events and it was very successful. I was very, very proud of our students and our very talented teachers. Um, they were great and it was a very, very fast, very festive occasion and really got you into the holiday spirit. I don't know if I could have worn this sweater today if I had not experienced that concert on Saturday. Um, our Christmas parade float was also very successful. Um, Abby Van Lukey, our uh, administrative assistant in uh, technology and um, work, works with Ms. Howell and so she designed um, our float and it was beautiful. It was I, just, I couldn't believe it when it drove up. It was absolutely amazing. I was also kind of amazed as our board members walked up dressed as the characters from Whoville. We had the Grinch, we had Whoville citizens, we had Cindy Lou Who, we had the mayor, and of course, Mr. and Ms. Claus. And, the, and of course, the Corsicana Tiger was present as well. Uh, we won first place um, from the competition in the parade, so we want to thank Abby for that. She did a wonderful job. And now it is both my pleasure and my honor to ask Kiara Johnson to come forward. She designed the Corsicana ISD Christmas card for this year. She's a very, very talented artist, as you can see. And these are going out all over the city and across the state to a lot of different friends. So we have a prize for you, and we want to thank you for this. Y'all know who she is. Yeah, she's another one of those great Johnson yeah. kids. That's right. She's the last of the ones. Oh. Maybe you need some more, Tiffany. <laughs> no, no, no. Thank you. Thank you very much.
Finished. All right, well, thank you very much. So now we're going to move into the demographic report from Zonda Demographics. I'm going to ask Mr. Hudson Huff to come up. Um, he has, he and his company have done a great deal of work in looking at this demographic projection, and we appreciate you being here tonight. Thank you. Uh, good evening, uh, Board President, Dr. B Dr. Brown, and members of the board, and Dr. Frost. Thank you for the opportunity to be with you tonight uh, on the uh, most festivous of board meeting nights that I've been to yet. So thank you for that. <laughs> it's awesome. Absolutely great. So uh, I'll, I'll, I'll get into it here in the report. Uh, just, uh, just to highlight, um, we, we speak specific to kind of the conditions that are happening in the housing market, and then we get a little bit more into the details of what's happening specific within the district itself, as well as what's happening with the enrollment. So with that said, um, the job market definitely plays a big factor into what happens in our in our uh, housing market, and so we know that we had a uh, spike in in during the pandemic, uh, but it has been a very healthy uh, job market over the last several years, and so you can see the uh, unemployment rate uh, in the state of Texas was at 4.8 last year, and actually dropped down to about 3.8. And specifically to the Navarro County um, is is actually very much in alignment with that, and was at at 4.3 percent, and uh, this year uh, in October dropped down to about 3.5 percent. So very very strong. In response to that, we've seen that uh, regionally that the uh, housing market and the builders started to build quite a few starts. Uh, and so that that really took off in the uh, in that first quarter, or, or by the time you get to that third quarter of uh, 2021. Um, but you can see in, in what I'm about to highlight related to what we dealt with related to inflation and the interest rates um, that has dropped off. So you can actually see that from that third quarter of 21 down to the third quarter of 22, that those starts have started to come down, and it's partly tied to the interest rates that we've been dealing with. So you can see um, the Federal Reserve uh, went through a series of interest rate hikes. Uh, and so that started to take place as of March of 2022. So home, home uh, mortgage rates were at about 3.5% uh, in that early uh, springtime. And uh, on a uh, home that was about 210000 that monthly house payment would have been about $1,165. Um, and then over that six month period of time with the in interest rate increases that took place, um, took place in March, in May, June, July, into September, and we even had a, uh, a, an interest rate hike in uh, November uh, that, in that increased those above that 7%. Um, and that increased those monthly payments significantly, which is from talking to the home builders, that's the, that's the thing that people evaluate is what their monthly payments are gonna be. So we know that has caused an impact to people's evaluation on what they can buy. And so that has slowed, slowed things down as we've gotten into the fall. Apologize. There we go. Oh, sorry. I apologize. Didn't mean to. Make sure that I've got that back. If you got oh, go. If you don't mind, go to the next one there. So we do see that we do have uh, uh, job creation taking place. And so there was an announcement of the Riot Blockchain uh, company that is anticipated to open up the uh, largest uh, Bitcoin mining uh, warehouse in, 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 the, in North America. And so that is anticipated to bring approximately about 270 new jobs uh, to the area, as well as referencing that there would be several more hundred to come uh, in the following years. 
When you think about the district and its overall population, we've had significant increases, uh, about 2,800 residents over the last 10 to 12 years. Uh, and then you can see that there's about 1,000 additional households that have been added since that time. And what we also want to highlight for you is, is referencing the, uh, the population of the children in the student age groups uh, in the district. And so that has uh, gone up about 6.1%. You can also see that there, uh, there have been some ranges for the new homes uh, in the area, and so that has, uh, that has had, had, had a significant range as far as the difference between uh, the low end and the high end, but I will say that you have had a, sig a significant appreciation in the existing home market, and so if you look at what took place from 2010 to currently, you've got about a 70% increase in those uh, values over that time frame. When you look at what's, what happened related to uh, home sales, you have had between 2018 to, to this last year, you had about 600 homes that would average uh, year over year that would sell. Um, and you can see what happened after that second quarter um, with, with the in increases in the interest rate that you can see the softening in the housing market. And that is not unique to Corsicana in this area. This is happening in just about every region that we've got in the state and nationally. So it's just a softening of the market based off of where the interest rates currently are. The next one. Oops, sorry. Go back there if you want. Uh, we do see that there are four active building subdivisions that are in the district uh, with two futures, and then you also have uh, about 200 lots that are um, currently being built and, and, and developed with utilities and roads. Uh, and those are uh, the Corsicana Commons area that's in Navarro, as well as Barefoot Bay that is in the uh, Carroll uh, Elementary Zone. So Corsicana Commons uh, is a, uh, a mixed uh, use development. So that is uh, scheduled to have uh, about 166 single family lots. Uh, it has it referenced 15, but I actually drove it earlier today and it's actually closer to 30. Uh, homes that are currently under construction right now, so they've been moving at a faster pace than we'd even anticipated. So, um, we also know that they have uh, thir 13 commercial lots that'll be within that overall development, and then they also have multifamily that'll be built in into that development as well. Uh, it'll be a combination of duplexes and uh, townhomes, but based off of what the builders has shared with us, um, those are in out years, so that's several years to come. Uh, they are going to work on the single family uh, lots first, and then we'll be building those others, uh, other areas of the development later on. Uh, there are there are right now in the planning what they reference the planning stage is 13 lots that, are, that will be identified for the commercial use but they didn't specifically state um, you know a time frame for those uh, the next area we have is the uh, barefoot bay development and that is 105 uh, total lots and uh, that is being developed by Lakewood capital and uh, we, we know that they already have utilities and roads that are going in uh, for that development. It is uh, in the Carroll Elementary Zone. Um, it is going to be split um, related to where the boundaries are um, between the three school districts. Uh, so we, we don't know, we know about 30% of that development would be within the, uh, the uh, Corsicana boundaries. The, the next development is Westover Hills, and that has a total of 32 lots, uh, eight homes that are currently built with four that are currently under construction, and then we know that there are 20 vacant developed lots that will be, uh, are available to be built on. And that is in the Bowie Elementary Zone. And then Dobbins Crossing is uh, 18 total lots close to Collins Intermediate. And so that has eight homes that are currently completed with five homes that are under construction and five that have vacant developed lots. So 
right across the street uh, from Westover Hills is a future development called Brookstone. And so Brookstone is, has 30 total lots. Uh, and it's currently, I think, under, under review with the city and with anticipation of construction activity starting uh, this next year. That's okay. I, I, that's, I, no, no, y'all are great. This is great. No, that's okay. I'm, uh, we um, the the next uh, future development is is Northview, and that has uh, 71 futures that are included in that. Um, phase one through three have been completed, but through discussions with the city, uh, they anticipate that uh, that 70 will be a little little further out, potentially in three to five years before those those uh, those come to fruition. Whoops. So uh, looking at your multifamily, uh, we know that Recently, uh, you built the uh, Cedar Springs uh, apartment complex that opened this past, I think, within the last year, year and a half, that had 148 units. There aren't any current um, multifamily that are scheduled to be built currently right now. Uh, but again, I would refer back to, and what we've identified is the anticipation of what would happen at Corsicana Commons when you look at the uh, town hall, uh, townhomes and uh, duplexes that will be built. And there will be seven hundred, several hundred that will be included as part of that development into the future. So one of the things that we do is we identify uh, the uh, current locations of your students. And so uh, we have 274 students that currently reside outside of the district. Uh, many times over a certain percentage of that comes from staff students that may come from outside of the district. Um, and that consists of about 4.5% of your overall enrollment. Uh, approximately 94% of your overall student enrollment uh, is within the city of Corsicana, uh, city limits. We, we do identify uh, birth rates and, and, and make sure that you're aware of, of where those are. Uh, and we've highlighted the fact that uh, we did have a drop in, in district births in the 2018 year from the 2017 year. And so we only reference this just from the standpoint of making the district aware that there, there could be a lower <coughs> kindergarten grade that may come in uh, this coming year just be related to that. Um, we know that there's been growth that takes place between then and now, but it does indicate that there could be a percentage of a lower lower uh, cohort uh, growth in the kindergarten age group uh, this, this next year. I'm sorry. Uh, the, this is identifying uh, your previous five years. And so this will highlight uh, a couple of things. One is to identify your largest grade classes. So in yellow, you'll see your largest grade uh, classes over the last several years, and your green is your second uh, largest grade class. You'll see as I go into the next couple of slides, you'll see where there is a, a point in time in the next couple of years where you'll have a little bit of a drop in your overall enrollment. And that's tied into that large grade, that large, what is currently your 10th grade class will come through and graduate out. And so that following class is just a little smaller than that. So that just ties into not necessarily related to a drop in overall enrollment growth, but it just is a, is, is, is a small, uh, small drop in that one one year. I would also highlight when you look at your cohorts, um, you had in the 21-22 year between in that second grade class through your sixth grade class, you can see that there's a number that's below one and so those those grade levels did have a drop. Um, but 
it, it, if you'll look at that next year and it rolls up into that following uh, third grade class through the seventh grade class, all of those numbers came back and have risen up. So uh, whatever drop was, was in those grade cohorts uh, has come back up and returned. So I would also highlight that your pre-K, your first grade, and your ninth grade uh, areas, um, grade levels had the strongest cohort growth year over year. So when you look at the overall forecast, um, if you'll look in the far right corner, you'll see uh, what is anticipated to be uh, enrollment growth. Uh, and so you'll see that increase year over year. Um, and as I highlighted in that 25, 26 year where there is a drop and there is a minus seven that's referenced there, it's just related to that one large graduating class that leaves that, that previous year. And from then on, we would anticipate that you would continue to have growth beyond that point. This identifies specifically the enrollment that you currently have at each one of the campuses, and then a forecast based off of enrollment as well as uh, the uh, future potential developments in those various different regions. So as highlighted uh, with Bowie and, and Navarro, we would anticipate that you would have enrollment growth. Um, you do have a little bit of a drop into next year at those elementary school campuses, but that's because your fourth grade class is moving on to the intermediate school. So you'll see that your intermediate grades in the next year actually go up a little bit. Um, and your fourth grade, that, that, that elementary uh, enrollment number for every one of the elementaries goes down just a little bit, but it's just because of where that fourth grade class is and how it graduates on to the fifth grade this next year. Ultimately, you'll see that you progress through that same degree of enrollment increases at, at the various different levels um, at the middle and high school, and ultimately uh, with a uh, 10 year forecast, you'll see that you're going to ultimately be at that far uh, bottom right corner, about 6,400 uh, is, is what we're projecting right now based off of, of current developments. Well, sorry. So, with all that said, uh, in summer we have 91 additional students. Uh, that came into the district this year. Um, we have a, a drop in overall home sales in the area, but that is very consistent with what we see in other markets. And again, uh, it's due to where we're at with interest rates. Uh, and if uh, talking through the build and talking to many of the builders, uh, they anticipate that it, the interest rate did increase over 7%. Uh, when the uh, interest rate did drop this past month below 7%, buyers did start to come back. So they do anticipate that, that if, if numbers would level off and come down a little bit, that, that, uh, that the market buyers will come back into the market. So um, with that said, we do anticipate that we're going to have four active building uh, developments. And uh, Corsicana Commons is extremely busy right now. I can tell you they are, they are doing a lot of building in that area. And uh, with two futures uh, still coming, and then ultimately we think there's going to be about 140 students that will be added to the overall enrollment over the next five years and that you will most likely exceed about 6,400 students uh, when you get about 10 years out. And that's based off of what we know currently today based off of the developments that are currently proposed. I'd be happy to answer any additional questions you may have. Texas, the, the population of Texas has continued to grow significantly. You, you've heard um, businesses um, moving into the Texas region for, for the last several years. Um, I will say that year over year, the DFW Metroplex added 298,000 jobs year over year from September of, of 21 to September of 22. So the, the market as a whole is, has been very, very strong. Um, and so from that standpoint, I would say that 
we, we continue to see people move into the area where jobs are plentiful. What about like, um, like when people moving like from to the smaller communities coming out of the city, you know, like from Dallas, because from Dallas to Corsica is really not that far. So do you see like a, a change in people moving? You know, because for a while people were going like to Waxahachie from Dallas. They're working in Dallas, but work they live in Waxahachie. So do you see people coming out of Dallas moving like this way? I, I think it can be that. I, I definitely would say it's it may be more related to uh, people's ability to do the hybrid work model. And so that's where people are going to be able to be um, more flexible about where they're able to live. And so from that standpoint, they are moving to other areas that uh, sm smaller towns and regions that that are attractive. So absolutely. With, low, you know, with the growth in, like, let's say, like Waxahachie, because Dallas is really is, you know, can only go so far north until they're in Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. Do you do you see that Corsicana will be a, a beneficiary of that growth in the future? Absolutely. I think long term things continue to move this direction. So um, the the metroplex continues to widen, and so as that happens, I, I believe. Residents will continue to move south, and as developments that were more central to the DFW area move a little bit further south, then those things that they can reach will will come to areas like Corsicana. So, absolutely, I do believe that long term that that will be the case, and and we see that in overall population trends. So, with what you've got, and we would anticipate that those population trends would continue, and when you have uh, businesses that are moving into this area. Um, as you do with Riot Blockchain, those kind of things will potentially facilitate additional attention to the to the region and potentially create additional job growth and, and population growth. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank, thank you very much. It's a lot to digest, so thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right, we're going to move into the public hearing. Um, we're going to hear from interested parties regarding the possible designation of the Tawakana Creek Solar LLC reinvestment zone as contemplated by the tax value limitation application submitted by Tawakana Creek LLC. And I have a bunch to read. At this time, we will begin our public hearing regarding the possible creation of the Tawakana Creek Solar LLC reinvestment zone as contemplated by the tax value limitation application submitted by the Tawakana Creek Solar LLC. As required by Chapter 312 of the Texas Tax Code, the district posted notice of this hearing in the newspaper and notified the appropriate taxing authorities of hearing within the designated timelines. The purpose of this hearing is to allow any interested party to present an argument for or against the designation of the Tawakana Creek Solar LLC reinvestment zone. The legal description and location of the proposed reinvestment zone as published in the newspaper and posted on the district's websites are available at the back of the room. Before getting started, I would like to present a few guidelines. First, I would ask attendees and board members to keep in mind that the purpose of this hearing is for the board to hear from the community before making a decision regarding the designation of a reinvestment zone. I will ask Superintendent Dr. Frost and our legal counsel, Mr. Todd Clark, to take note of the concerns voiced by community members and to address them throughout tonight's meeting to the extent possible. Next, keep in mind that while the board will be listening closely to public comments, we will not answer questions directly or engage in conversation during the hearing. We will have time to consider and discuss matters more fully later in the meeting when we take up action items on that matter. Finally, we are all here to do what is best for our district and our students. With that in mind, please be respectful in your comments and address them to the board. At this time, are there any speakers who wish to present an argument for or against the de designation of the Tawakana Creek Solar LLC reinvestment zone? All right, no 
Welcome. All, all interested parties have had an opportunity to speak for or against the designation of the Tawakana Creek Solar LLC Reinvestment Zone, and we, we are ready to move on to our next agenda item. Public hearing, item 7C. At this time, we will begin our public hearing regarding the possible creation of the Pitsky Ridge Solar LLC Reinvestment Zone as contemplated by the tax value limitation application submitted by the Pitsky Ridge Solar LLC. As required by Chapter 312 of the Texas Tax Code, the district posted notice of this hearing in the newspaper and notified the appropriate taxing authorities of the hearing within the designated timelines. The purpose of this hearing is to allow any interested party to pre present an argument for or against the designation of the Pitsky Ridge Solar LLC Reinvestment Zone. The legal description and location of the proposed reinvestment zone as published in the newspaper and posted on the district's websites are available at the back of the room. The same guidelines as I described before the first public hearing still apply. At this time, are there any speakers who wish to present an argument for or against the designation of the Pitsky Ridge Solar LLC reinvestment zone? All right, thank you for your concerns. All interested parties have had an opportunity to speak for or against the designation of the Pitsky Ridge Solar LLC Reinvestment Zone, and we are ready to move on to our next agenda item. Tom Clark from the Las Vegas Law Firm. You have uh, posted on your agenda an opportunity to go into closed session if you want to, but if you would just like me to give an overview out here, I can do that too. Just keep Anybody want to go in close? Just roll through. All right. Thank you, sir. At this time, we will begin agenda item 7D consider and take possible action to adopt criteria and guidelines for creating a reinvestment zone within geographic boundaries of Corsicana IST. All the agenda for this item specifies one project and item 7F pertain to another. Any criteria and guidelines would apply to any approved reinvestment zone. Dr. Frost, you may begin your presentation. As you know, the district received an application for tax value limitation for Tawakana Creek Cellar LLC seeking a pla to place a cap on its value for maintenance and operations tax purposes in exchange for bringing additional taxable improvements and jobs to Corsicana ISD. Before any entity is eligible for a tax value limitation, it must be located within a reinvestment zone created under Chapter 312 of the Texas Tax Code. A reinvestment zone is an area subject to tax benefits due to its ability to attract major investment in the district. In most cases, reinvestment zones are created by the county in connection with the tax abatement. However, as a taxing entity, Corsicana ISD has the ability to create a limited purpose reinvestment zone connected to pending tax value limitation application. Before the district cr can create a limited purpose reinvestment zone, it must adopt criteria and guidelines that will govern the district's consideration and adoption of reinvestment zones moving forward. The draft criteria and guidelines you have in front of you, if adopted, will allow the district to move forward with the designation of a limited purpose reinvestment zone for Tawakana Creek LLC and any future reinvestment zone zones deemed appropriate or necessary. The, cri the criteria and guidelines were prepared by our district's legal counsel, Ms. Kelly Kaltaller, with Walsh Gallagher's firm tonight. Ms. Kaltaller's law partner, Todd Clark, is a, also a shareholder in the firm, is, is available to answer questions if needed. So do, do, you, do you want to hear a criteria, the criteria from Mr. Clark? Okay. Mr. Clark, would you provide an overview for the board, please? Certainly. Thank you, Dr. Frost, Dr. Brown, trustees. Appreciate you having me here tonight to give you this overview. Uh, as your superintendent just explained, the process by which you can even extend the opportunity for a value limitation agreement, which is also on your agenda tonight, stems from the creation of a reinvestment zone. Uh, what you have on your agenda and you've had in your board book as well is the criteria and guidelines that you have to approve before you can designate a specific zone as an economic redevelopment zone. 
Um, so the guidelines themselves are only about three pages long. Essentially, they say that pursuant to Texas Tax Code 312, uh, you're able to designate, you have the authority to designate a reinvestment zone. It explains that the purpose of that is to promote economic growth and the criteria set out in the document go through things like job creation, <coughs> wages and benefits to be paid to new employees, anticipated increase in taxable values uh, within the uh, district's jurisdiction, student population growth potential, and other ways to attract new business to the area. Uh, the guidelines just explain that you'll give written notice, as you have already done, uh, uh, to the public that you may create such a reinvestment zone and that you will provide all the taxing entities within the district uh, written notice that you are considering creating a reinvestment zone like this, and that has happened as well. So those things have to happen seven days in advance of tonight, and they have. Um, and so the guidelines just say that's the basis for and the criteria you will apply in considering any other uh, reinvestment zone tonight or for the next two years and also it's the uh, that reinvestment zone set of guidelines applies for any um, tax limitate uh, value limitation agreements you might enter um, for any industry that's located in that reinvestment zone so that's the overview on the criterion guidelines themselves after this item you'll then consider if you want to um, uh, actually create a specific reinvestment zone for the Tawakana Solar, uh, Tawakana Creek Solar LLC <coughs> project. So while I thought that we might have an action item to create a specific uh, reinvestment zone for that applicant as well, since the controller's office hasn't yet approved or certified that project, I'm just gonna ask that if you approve these criteria and guidelines, and then you approve the Tawakana Creek reinvestment zone itself, uh, that you also have some additional motion on that one remaining item just to say, hey, these are the guidelines that will apply in the event that Pisgah Ridge comes back to us for approval at a later time. It's kind of a belt and suspenders approach. Really, if you adopt these criteria and guidelines, they'll apply for the next two years for any uh, investment opportunity that comes along. But I just wanted to make that clear why that's set out in your agenda that way. Any questions? Thank you. I'll entertain a motion then. I move that we adopt the criteria and guidelines as presented and to authorize the board president or his designate, designate to ex execute same on behalf of the board. Second. All right, a motion and a second to adopt the criteria and guidelines as presented and authorize the board president or, or his designee to execute same on behalf of the board. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. Ayes have it. Motion passes. All right, we are now ready to take up item 7E on our agenda for tonight, which is consideration and possible action to adopt resolution creating Tawakana Creek Solar LLC Reinvestment Zone. All right, are there any motions or questions? I move to designate the Tawakini <coughs> Creek Solar LLC reinvestment zone by way of, of the resolution as presented. I further move to authorize the board, of, the board president or his designee to execute the resolution on behalf of the board that a complete copy of the resolution be included in the official minutes for this meeting. Is there a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. All right to designate the Tawakana Creek Solar LLC reinvestment zone by way of the resolution as presented. I further move to authorize the board president or his designee to execute the resolution on behalf of the board, and then a complete copy of the resolution be included in the official minutes of this meeting. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. The ayes have it. Motion passes. All right. We have already approved criteria and guidelines for the adoption of the reinvestment zone. Do I have a motion to apply the, the, these criteria and guidelines regarding the application filed by the Pinsky Ridge Solar LLC? I move that we apply the adopted criteria and guidelines to our consideration of the application of Pinsky Ridge Solar LLC. Do I have a second? Second. 
of a motion and a second that we apply the adopted criteria and guidelines to our consideration of the application of Peaky Ridge Solar LLC. All those in favor say aye. aye. All opposed say no. Ayes have it. And we will apply the adopted criteria and guidelines to our conversation of the Pitsky Ridge Solar LLC. There is no action item for consideration of designating a reinvestment zone and, act, and action to adopt a resolution creating Pitsky Ridge Solar LLC reinvestment zone. But we may take up a future meeting and will consider any comments from tonight's public hearing. We will now go into closed session for the purpose of consulting with legal counsel regarding the proposed. Well, we don't have to do that. We're not going into closed session. All right, sorry. Unless you might want to. Unless you want yeah, anybody? All right, sorry. It's a very long script, okay? <coughs> All right, we are. Okay. This is, this is a public hearing to receive input from the public regarding the possible approval of the application and agreement for a value limitation agreement with, with Tawakana Creek Solar LLC. The purpose of this hearing is to allow any interested party to offer comments or present their views regarding the possible approval of the application of or proposed agreement with Tawakana Creek Solar LLC. As, at this time, are there any speakers who wish to comment on or present an argument for or against the application of and proposed agreement with Tawakana Creek Solar LLC. All interested parties have had an opportunity to speak for or against the application of and proposed agreement with Tawakana Creek Solar LLC and we are ready to move on to our next agenda item. The next item to consider is 7-H and take possible action to make findings associated with the application and proposed agreements for tax value limitation with Tawakana Creek Solar LLC as required by the Texas Tax Code Chapter 313. Board members, you have a copy of the proposed findings in your packets and have had a chance to review. Dr. Frost, will you please read the proposed findings aloud for our audience? I would love to. Mm -hmm. Findings as to each of the criteria listed in Texas Tax Code Section 313.025 in Texas Administrative Code Title 34 Section 9.1054. Based on the representation of, of applicants sent, set out in the application attached is Exhibit A. The Comptroller's Approval and Economic Impact Analysis attached is Exhibit B. The District Consultant's Independent Economic Impact Analysis attached is e as Exhibit C, and the Franchise Tax Account status attached is Exhibit E. The Board of Trustees finds, number one, that the Comptroller recommends approval of the application, number two, that there is a strong and positive relationship between the applicant's industry and the types of qualifying jobs to be created by the applicant and the long-term economic growth plans of the state. Number three, that based on the representations in the application, the applicant could relocate or relocate the project to another state or another region of this state. Number four, that the project will result in revenue gains by the school district and that the economic effects on the local and regional tax base are that the tax base will increase as a result of the project and additional employment. Number five, that there exists a small but undetermined possibility that the project could have an impact on enrollment from families that might temporarily relocate during the construction phase, but that any impact during the operation phase can be absorbed by current facilities. Number six, that the projected market value of the qualified property of the applicant as determined by the comptroller is $416,500,000. Number seven, that the proposed limitation on appraised value for the qualified property of the applicant is $30 million. Number eight, that the projected dollar amount of district maintenance and operations <coughs> taxes that would be imposed on the qualified property for each of for each year of the agreement, if the property does not receive a limitation on appraised value, is $29,323,247, as shown in Exhibit B, Attachment A, Table 3. Number nine, that the projected dollar amount of the taxes would be imposed on the qualified property for each tax year of the agreement. If the property receives a limitation on appraised value is $7,423,960, as shown on Exhibit B, Attachment A, Table 4. 
that the total amount of taxes projected to be lost or gained by the district over the life of the agreement computed by subtracting the projected taxes if the property receives a tax limitation from the projected taxes if the property does not receive a tax limitation is $21,899,286 as shown on Exhibit B, Attachment A, Table 4. Number 11. The applicant is eligible for the limitation on the appraised value of the applicant's qualified property. Applicant's qualified property is eligible for a limitation on appraised value under Texas Tax Code Section 313.024 as a renewable energy electric generation project. Number 12. The project proposed by the applicant is reasonably likely to generate tax revenue in an amount sufficient to offset the school district maintenance and operations and, um, I'm sorry, maintenance and operations ad valorem tax revenue lost as a result of the agreement before the 25th anniversary of the beginning of the limitation period. 13. The limitation of appraised value is a determining factor in the applicant's decision to invest capital and construct the project in this state. Number 14, the job creation requirement of 10 new jobs exceeds the industry standard for the number of employees reasonably necessary for the operation of the project described in the application. Pursuant to Texas Tax Code 313.025F1, the board waives the new job creation requirement in Tax Code Section 313.051B. 15. Applicant will create two new qualifying jobs and applicant has confirmed that such jobs will meet the requirements of Texas Tax Code Section 313.0213. 16. That the project will be located within an area designated as a reinvestment zone pursuant to Texas Tax Code Chapter 312. 17. The, app the information in the application submitted by the applicant is true and correct. 18. The proposed agreement for limitation on appraised value of property for school district maintenance and operations taxes agreement attached here to as Exhibit D meets all of the requirements set out in Texas Tax Code 31, Section 313.027, including adequate and appropriate revenue protection provisions for the district. Number 19. The proposed agreement is in the form of the template Texas Economic Development Act agreement adopted by the Comptroller as of October 2020, and the Comptroller has verified that the agreement complies with the provisions of Chapter 313 of the Texas Tax Code and 34 Texas Administrative Code, Chapter 9, Subchapter F. 20. Considering the purpose and effect of the law and the terms of the agreement, granting the application and entering the agreement are in the best interest of the district and the state. 21. The applicant, Taquana uh, Creek Seller LLC, Texas Taxpayer ID number 32080854170, is an entity subject to Chapter 21, Texas Tax Code, and certified to be in good standing with the Texas Comptroller of Public Accounts. A copy of the Comptroller's Franchise Tax Account Status is attached as Exhibit E. 22. There are no conflicts of interest on the board at the time of its consideration on the agreement. 23. And final one. It is hereby found, determined, and declared that sufficient written notice of the date, time, place, and subject of the meeting of the Board of Trustees at which these findings were made was posted at a place convenient and readily accessible at all times to the general public for the time required by law preceding this meeting as required by Chapter 551. Texas Government Code and that this meeting has been open to the public as required by law at all times during which these findings were made and the subject matter thereof has been discussed, considered, and formally acted upon. The Board of Trustees for further ratifies, approves, and confirms such written notice and posting thereof. That is all. <laughs> Trustees, please take special note of finding number 22 regarding conflict of interest. Any trustee with a conflict or potential conflict of interest should identify the conflict at this time. Any such trustee should abstain from any vote on the findings or agreement. All right, do I have a motion and a second? I 
I move to adopt the findings on the tax value limitation application submitted by Tawakana Creek Solar LLC as presented and to authorize the board president or his designee to ex execute the findings on behalf of the board. I further move we include a complete copy of the findings in the final minutes for this meeting. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second to adopt the findings of the tax value limitation application submitted by Tawakana Creek Solar LLC as presented to and authorized the board president or his designee to execute the findings on behalf of the board. I further move we include a complete a copy of the findings in the final minutes of this meeting. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. Ayes have it. And we will adopt the findings on the tax value limitations and a submit an application submitted by Tawakana Creek Solar LLC. As presented to an authorized board president or his designee to execute the findings on behalf of the board and we will include a complete copy of the findings in the final minutes. Having approved the findings, we will now move to item 7i and consider and take possible action to approve the tax value limitation agreement with Tawakana Creek Solar LLC. Does a representative from Tawakana Creek Solar LLC, LLC wish to speak at this time? Good afternoon. Uh, for the evening, I'll say. My name is Gary Peters. Uh, I'm a consultant representing Solar Component in their development of this project. Behind me, I've got uh, Tom McElwain, who's the actual uh, developer uh, of the project of Tawakana Creek Solar. Um, just real quick, want to give you guys an update as well as kind of talk about the project, and then uh, Tom can answer <coughs> specific project questions or company questions that you have for him. Um, but it's a uh, specific two Corsicana ISD. It's 235 megawatts of, uh, of solar PV uh, generation, and then there's 325 megawatts of, of batteries that's projected to be here in Corsicana ISD. Overall, that's 53% of the project. The other 47% of the project is south in Wortham ISD. Um, on October 17th, they approved um, the findings of the 313 agreement uh, with Tawakna Creek Solar. Uh, so this kind of finalizes our process with, with both of the school districts and then we'll start focusing our efforts on, uh, on Navarro County as we progress the development further. Um, do you have any questions for me? If not, I'll let uh, Tom answer some questions if you have any for him. Thank you. Thank you all for having us again this evening. My name is Tom, as Gary said. Um, I can just give a, a brief update on how the project is going so far. So since we were last here, things are still progressing pretty well. Um, we've just finished some geotechnical surveys on the property. Um, we're additionally working with the utility and have a meeting with them with Encore in January to review the transmission and the uh, point of interconnection into the grid out there. So I would say we're still in sort of a, an early to mid stage of the development of the project, still at least probably a year um, at the quickest from starting any construction, but overall things are progressing well. We haven't had any roadblocks or, or major issues to deal with uh, to date. So appreciate your time, and, and if you have any questions, happy to answer them. have any questions? Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Do we have a motion and a second? I move, I move to approve the proposed tax limitation with Tawakana Creek Solar LLC as presented and to authorize the board president or his designee to execute the agreement on behalf of the board. Go with second. Second. Right, motion and a second to approve the proposed tax limitations with Tawakana Creek Solar LLC as presented and to authorize the board president or his designee to execute the agreement on behalf of the board. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. The ayes have it, and we will have approved the proposed tax limitation with Tawakana Creek Solar LLC as presented and, off, and to authorize the board president or his designee to execute the agreement on behalf of the board. All right. All right. Now we're moving into consent agenda. I move we approve the consent agenda as presented. Is there a second? A second. Thank you. There's a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. Ayes have it, and we've approved the consent agenda. 
We will now go into closed session uh, as permitted by Texas Governance Code 551.01.